Hello, my name is Jacob Todson, and welcome back to the Wisdom of Odin. Today, we're going to be figuring out exactly how pagan is Christmas, to see what percentage of Christmas is actually pagan in origin. And so we have a lot to talk about, and the place I'm at doing this is a place I probably shouldn't be. I am at the Ark Encounter, the Ark Recreation here in Kentucky that, well, honestly, I'm just here because of the pretty lights, but also for a little bit of fun and chaos. So it's been interesting filming here so far. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see if I get caught talking about subjects I probably shouldn't be talking about here and discussing how pagan is Christmas. So let's start with an easy one so you can get the concept of this video. Let's start with the Yule Log, because the Yule Log is something that is not very common in America, but is very prominent still in uh, the Germanic countries and the Scandinavian countries. And there are several different ways to do it and traditions because it is so widespread. Um, so the a Yule Log typically is a log that is burned for around 7 to 12 days, uh, marking a period of time within the winter celebration, which is a common theme throughout many winter celebrations. And so a Yule log, again, to us Westerners, are typically chocolate with cream in the center rolled together. But historically, Yule logs are uh, actual trees that are sometimes fed into a fire pit. So the tradition going all the way back has a lot of different folklore. I found a few different stories, but mainly there was something with divining the future with the embers coming off of the Yule log. Uh, but the main consensus... Oh no! Is the fact so they actually do already have people following me around. I'm not even kidding. Um, there's someone that stopped when I, I had to keep rambling there because uh, they were paying attention to what I said. So, uh, anyways, a Yule Log is very uh, distant in the past, but again, it's one of those things I can't give you an exact date of where it comes from, but it's just ingrained into uh, the history of uh, Yule traditions in the ancient past. And so to me, the Yule Log is 100% a pagan tradition. All right, so let's talk Christmas trees. Now, Christmas trees, I want to say in my gut, are pagan in origin, simply because of the fact that they are trees being decorated and celebrated around. This doesn't feel very Christian in origin. But the first mentioning of Christmas trees is around the 16th century, I believe, and it was done by the Germans. Now, the Germans may give us something here. So if the Germans are the first to decorate a tree with lights, uh, to celebrate the winter season, the Germans were also the ones historically that worshiped trees uh, very, very prominently. Uh, so there is many accounts of the Germans, uh, the early Germans worshiping trees and these being targets of uh, persecution and destruction uh, at the time of conversion. And so it is curious that the Germans are the first written account of worshiping trees, I mean, decorating trees once again. Uh, so other than that, decoration in general, I'm kind of wrapping up into this category just because it seems to be a very universal human-y, christmas -y thing as far as decorating for winter. Um, but as far as the evergreens, this is something that possibly has uh, connections to Roman origin. So the Romans uh, saw evergreens as a sign of uh, immortality, but also of winter because they withstood uh, the changing of the seasons. And so decorating with evergreens was something that the Romans also did to some extent. And then uh, in general, winter decoration often comes uh, with evergreens. Uh, but because of this lack of proof, like I can't prove it to you, um, I'm going to give Christmas trees 50%. This hurts me because I think it is. I honestly truly believe that Christmas trees are probably pagan in origin. Uh, but without that proof, I'm just going to say 50%. I do know that there is a Bible verse that talks about, uh, you know, not like heathen practices being decorating trees. But I think that Bible verse is not talking specifically about the Christmas tree, if I remember my research correct. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or let me know down below if there is more information about Christmas trees and their origin. All right, so this one might surprise you. Uh, so caroling is surprisingly not a Christmas Christian tradition. Caroling's origins are from Vaseling, uh, which are Anglo-Saxon in origin. I'll correct myself here if I am wrong. But vassaling is essentially a bunch of drunk people showing up at your house, singing at the top of their lungs to get more booze. And the moment you give them more booze or snacks, they'll leave. So it's kind of like some kind of weird winter trick-or-treating. Vassaling is also, like, also something that the Catholic Church 
really, really hate it. So Vaseline became very scrutinized by uh, the Catholic Church once Christianity took over in Europe, but it was something they really had a trouble getting rid of. And it wasn't until the Puritan uh, Reformation or the Protestant, Pro Protestant Reformation that the uh, Vaseline was kind of outlawed. In fact, uh, it was kind of removed and seen as uh, taboo or, or negative or bad. And so it was removed from a lot of Protestant traditions. Vaseline itself has definitely taken a seat back in modern Catholicism uh, as it still survives in Europe today. But Vaseline is what became Christmas caroling. So while it used to be a drunken stuber that people used to do to get free booze, eventually it was taken by the Protestants and made into something positive and uplifting. And so Christmas caroling with positive songs door to door became the replacement for Vaseline because something it's something that people still want to do. I'll also notice, uh, note that Krampus Nacht uh, is very similar to this. So Krampus Nacht is someone dresses up as a giant goatman, typically men, and they go around and they uh, go door to door and uh, cause mischief and they are given schnapps to go away. So this kind of weird winter Halloween trick or treat is something that is common in the ancient past. And this is eventually what became Christmas caroling. So this was really interesting in my research. So with this, I have to label Christmas caroling as surprisingly 90% pagan in origin. I honestly can't believe it. And I think we need to bring back more Vaseline. It sounds like a lot of fun. And it is interesting that the Puritan, particularly in the United States, took something like Vaseline and made it very tame with Christmas caroling. Not that Christmas caroling is wrong, but it definitely got a little bit more tame. A lot more tame. 90%. Filming here has proven very difficult for five major reasons. One, this is not a place that a pagan should be filming a video. Two, there are so many children here, which make it loud, and I don't want to film children. Three, there's a ton of security here, <laughs> and they have been giving me the side eyes when walking around doing this. Four, it's windy and cold. And five, the music is so loud everywhere. So, if you appreciate the work I put into this video and going to a place I probably shouldn't be filming this, please think about supporting this channel any way you can namely in the purchasing of this book here, A Yule Story, a book I wrote uh, to celebrate this time of year and the, and the traditions that come from the ancient Scandinavian, uh, like the Yule Log and like Yulnir, a Santa Claus-like figure. Uh, so if you want to support this channel, please think about picking up a copy of A Yule Story this holiday season. Uh, it's got a bunch of reviews now. It's been bought in so many different countries. Uh, so it's been getting a lot of love. Thank you to all who uh, support this channel. And so speaking of Yulnir, let's talk about Santa Claus next. So Santa Claus, this is the one that I really struggled to find any information on. So the problem with, uh, so St. Nicholas uh, is from around the fourth century and he was a Turkish man, but was did things in Greece and, and did a lot of things for children. Uh, and so became St. Nicholas and then became a, a prominent saint throughout Catholicism. And then of course, eventually became the Santa Claus like figure that we know. And then eventually he, St. Nicholas made his way into the Netherlands and the Netherlands uh, made him into uh, Sinter Klaus. And Sinter Klaus and his celebration is very known in the Netherlands still to this day, including his uh, travels with Svarte Piet, as I love mentioning on this channel. And then the Dutch immigrated to the United States. And in the 1800s into the 1900s, uh, the massive amount of Dutch influence on the United States, namely New York City, uh, led to these Dutch immigrants bringing Santa Claus to the United States, who became Santa Claus. And so we look at this uh, origin and we say okay so it all came from saint nicholas went to the dutch and then the dutch came to america and it became santa claus that we know now kind of it's probably good they lost far to pete along the way but when we go all the way back to the netherlands we see that santa claus might actually be a replacement for an odin like figure doing the wild hunt and so i believe it was suggested by jacob grimm that santa claus is actually a replacement for odin uh, and that the wild hunt and then Odin having some kind of thing to do with enacting justice onto children who are bad and bringing gifts. And then there's uh, and then possibly there were dwarves involved who went down chimneys and got their face covered in soot. And that's why they became Schwarte Piet. But again, I don't have a lot of proof for this. Um, I, the only thing I really have is I think the Jacob Grimm account suggesting that uh, Santa Claus was actually Odin. So if this is true, then Santa Claus and some, to some extent, is a pagan figure. But again, this is very uh, debatable, and I'm not saying I, I, I feel this 100%. So that's why I think I'm going to give Santa Claus 50% 
of pagan origin. Um, so I do believe that Santa Claus in general doesn't feel like a Christian figure. He's a mysterious white bearded old man who travels around the world on a magical sleigh pulled by magical animals and gives gifts to children and coal to bad children. This doesn't feel exactly Christian. So take that as you will, but I'm going to leave Santa Claus at 50%. So this next section, we're going to have to expand a little bit more on possibly the true pagan origin of Christmas. And it's not in the North as you might expect. Uh, so feasting, drinking, and togetherness and all this uh, is surprisingly not a part of Christian Christmas. It's a part of general winter celebrations, namely the winter celebration in Rome, which was Saturnalia, which means we need to have a Saturnalia break because this is something that was new to me. So talking about Saturnalia, uh, this is a holiday that was in Rome. I'll put the dates right here because I don't remember them off my top of my head. And it's sometimes changes between the 24th and the 25th. But essentially it was the time that even the slaves got off of work. So it was the end of the year, the end of the harvest, uh, the animals for winter were being slaughtered. And so this was a, a multi-day process uh, of celebration where people would a party to the biggest extent. Slaves were supposed to be treated as free citizens or at least given uh, the same, uh, you know, feasting and celebration rights as free citizens. Everyone was supposed to celebrate together. And so this tradition carried on for a very long time and it was often considered the most important holiday in Rome. So feasting and drinking, 100%. This is pagan in origin because of Saturnalia, but also because we know this from the other uh, Northern countries as well as uh, of Yule celebrations is that uh, this time of year is a time for feasting and drinking. And then when Christianity came, um, and then obviously at the fall of Rome, many people still continue to the celebration of Saturnalia and uh, this exchange of food and drink. And then uh, when uh, they were asked to celebrate some form of Christianity instead, they refused and they continued to celebrate Saturnalia. And so this date of around December 25th was chosen as the date of Christmas Day because of the Romans uh, choosing this day because it was Saturnalia. It was the end. It was the final festivities. And so it was used as a way of conversion for the remaining Romans who continued to have these heathen festivals. So, as I was discussing with my new friends here, um, Saturnalia being the uh, original date for December 25th, I did also see things that possibly Mithras was born on December 25th and Sol Invictus. Uh, so these are two other possible deity-like figures that could have been born on this day that weren't Jesus. So the entire date of December 25th is probably pagan in origin as well. Anyways, let's talk about gift giving and how this actually has its origins in Saturnalia as well. Uh, so gift giving in ancient Rome, from what I can tell, was mostly done as kind of like a gag thing. They were often really small gifts or comical gifts that were given between people during the Saturnalia celebration. And so this tradition, of course, carried into uh, the Christian tradition that came from the convergence of Christmas and Saturnalia. Uh, and then gift giving also, I'm going to give 100% because of this origin in Saturnalia. But not only that, we also have the general idea that in the northern countries, the Germanic, the Yule celebrating countries, that the gift exchange during this time of year was something that's been happening for a very long time. Just because of the culture. It's part of the culture. And so, seemingly, if it started in Rome as a gift-giving exchange during Saturnalia, this is where it came from in Christmas that we still celebrate today. And of course, it became very commercialized into the 1900s as Christmas became popular, namely in New York City at first. Hopefully you're detecting a theme as that... My friends miss me. What an interesting noise these birds make. Uh, <laughs> but yes, okay, ending this section, 100% gift giving and the date, 100% are all pagan in origin. So I think it's actually time to end this video. So what's the answer? What, how pagan is Christmas? Well, after adding all the numbers together for my super scientific formula, I have ended up with a percentage of 84.4% pagan in origin. The biggest subtractors of this, obviously being Santa Claus, 
and Christmas trees. And really it's because I still have that hunch. I have that hunch that they are, um, but I can't prove definitively that they are pagan in origin. So let me know down below what you think of this percentage, if you agree with it. And thank you so much for joining me through this video. And you may be wondering, why did I choose this? Well, some people might th think that I was here to cause mischief. That's not really the case. Uh, ultimately, it's because in the United States, there's not a lot of places that have Christmas lights that are non-religious. And so I wanted a place that had Christmas lights to film this video, um, but this was the best one I had available to me. Um, so I know some people were probably like hoping I got kicked out or something. I definitely don't think I could be very open here. I definitely felt like I was being watched at times, but ultimately I didn't have any problems. Uh, so for those looking for a video where I got kicked out and recorded the whole thing, sorry to disappoint, but I hope you enjoyed the lighting for this video. I hope you enjoyed the subject. Let me know what you thought down below and I'll see you in the next video here at the Wisdom of Odin. My companions to make sure I don't get drug away. Say hello to my companions. Hello. hello. And then my new friends. The birds, whoever these are, I want to save you. Let's get in the ark and let's go.